Okay, welcome to another Print Lab tutorial. We're going to be talking about image size in this one, or how to resize your image using Photoshop. Now remember, you need to keep in mind that this is what we're trying to accomplish. We need to resize our images to fit within the printable area of whatever paper we're trying to print on. Um, for example, if you want an 11 by 17 image, you can't print on the medium paper, which is 11 by 17, but the printable area is less than 11 by 17. That includes any white space you need. So if you need a border, if you include that in your file, it includes it as file size. And so um, there's no automatic cropping in our software. Okay, it's gonna see the white space as ink and it's gonna treat it that way. So if you have any white space, you either need to crop it out or resize the whole thing or print on a larger sheet of paper, okay? So remember, you want these dimensions or smaller to print on these different papers. That's our goal. So in Photoshop, we have our image here. Let's resize this and let's go to image and image size. And here in this window, you have your width and height here. You have your resolution here. Okay, you always wanna double check your resolution first. So I'm set to 300. 300 is standard for printing. So you always want this to be at 300. Okay, I am set at 300, so I can go ahead and change my width and height to what I need it. Let's say I wanted to print on a small. Let's look at our diagram again. Okay, printing on a small is eight and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. So I need to make that accordingly. So let's start with the height, the longest edge. We'll go 10.25. And that brings our width to 6.789. Now, if I did this, if I tried to max this out at 8.25, that would make the height too long. Um, this doesn't even fit on the sheet of paper, which is 11 inches. Okay, so I want to make this 10.25. And then I'll let width be whatever it is. I'll click OK. My image is resized. I can go to File, Save As, call it small and then I can save this file to my desktop and then add that file to the print station okay that's scenario number one what if you bring in your file to Photoshop say like this one and you go to image image size and you check your resolution and it's not 300 See mine is set at 72. Okay, this is the first thing you ever want to change if it's not set properly. You don't want to change these until you've set this. Okay, so order of events. You open up image size. You want to uncheck resample. You want to set resolution to 300, which you'll notice changes my width and height. Okay, now let's say I wanted to print this on the 11 by 17 paper. Let's look at my diagram again. On the 11 by 17 paper, I need at least 10 and 3 quarters by 16 and a quarter. Okay, so I'm probably going to start with my long edge and try to go to 16 and a quarter and see what that gives me. So my long edge is my width. I'm going to go to 16.25. Okay, that gives me 10.848 for my height, which is too wide because if we look at the diagram again, it's 10 and 3 quarters, that's 10.75. Okay, so I need to adjust this. So let's make this 10.75, which brings my width or my yeah my long edge down to 16.1, uh, which is less than 16 and a quarter. But that means so that means it'll fit. Okay, so I'll do that. Um, but you notice that I did this. Now my resolution's all weird. Okay, I didn't check resample. So let's go back to the order of events. Let's reset this. So I open image size. I uncheck resample, I set this to 300, and then I check resample again, and then I set my width and height. In this case, it was on the short side, 10.75, and I'll click OK. My image is resized. I can go to File, Save As, call this Printable sword. Save that to my desktop. Okay. 
And if you ever see this window, when this particularly happens with a JPEG, okay, you want the maximum amount of resolution possible. So I'm going to grab this slider. I'm going to move it all the way to the right, and then I'll click OK. Now I have a new file ready for print, and I can drop that into the print station. Let's talk about some other uh, file saving situations. Um, if we go back to this one, notice that I have a .tiff up, up here. Let's look at the saving window for that. So I'm going to go to Edit, or sorry, File, Save As. Save as small. Okay, this window, when you have a TIFF, something to look at. Most of the time you just want the defaults, um, but occasionally you'll see this section defaulted to zip. That's going to cause problems with our print software. Um, so you always want to double check that this is set to none. Image compression set to none, and then you're going to click OK. Um, so occasionally you might see it set on zip. You don't want that. You want it to be none. So I'll click OK that's ready to go. Now occasionally you'll have a file that has layers. Um, in order to print your pictures we need your images to be flattened. Okay, so no layers. Um, so there's a couple options you can do with that. I'm going to add a couple layers here just so we can do it as an example. Okay, so let's say this is my file. I have these layers. Um, I don't have to flatten it here. I can go to File, Save As, and you'll notice that in this window, there's this little checkbox called layers, and it's checked. A TIFF file can support having layers. A JPEG cannot. So if you save it as a JPEG, it'll automatically flatten it. Um, but if you save it as a TIFF, it does have the option of keeping the layers. So if you're going to save it as a TIFF and send it to us to print, you need to make sure that this is not checked. And then you'll save. Make sure that it's not zip. And click OK. That's one option of flattening. Or you can flatten it before you save it. By going to your Layers panel, you can click on this menu, go down to Flatten Image. That'll merge all the layers into one, and then when you go to save it, that's all grayed out because there are no layers, so you don't have to uncheck it. And you can just hit Save and save it to your desktop. Now let's say you have a situation where you need to have a specific dimension um, because a teacher required you to have a specific dimension, let's say 8 by 10. Um, if you notice, my image is kind of longer on the long side, and so it's kind of elongated. Um, this will not give me an 8 by 10 ratio if I try to resize it to that. Okay, Let me go ahead and go into my history, and I'm going to go back to when it was open. So this is the original. So if I need a specific ratio like 8 by 10, the first step that I will do is use the crop tool. So I'll click on the crop tool. Up here, when I have the crop tool activated, you have a ratio. So here I can stick in 8 by 10. So you notice that my image is longer than an 8 by 10 ratio. Okay, So I'm going to be cropping off quite a bit in order to get that. Um, but if that's the requirement for my assignment, then I kind of have to deal with that kind of situation. Okay, so I'm going to place it just how where I want to crop it. Maybe something like that. Okay, and I'm going to accept the crop, so accept. Okay, now this doesn't change the image size. Cropping it at an 8x10 ratio doesn't change the dimensions of my photo. If I go into image image size, you can see that I'm actually 13 and a half by almost 11, so 11 by 13 and a half. Okay, that's not 8 by 10, even though I set it in my crop tool to 8 by 10. It's only a ratio, which means if I then change it here to 8, it'll be a perfect 8 by 10 because of the way I cropped it. Okay. So if you need a specific dimension for your assignment, you need to set the ratio in the crop tool and crop it that way and then resize it because cropping doesn't resize. I can now go file, save as, and go through that process again. Okay, well that's resizing your image in Photoshop. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.